Welcome to the Valve Studio. This is part two of my interview with Fat Willie, aka Lord Valve. This is a seven segment interview that spans about an hour and a half. And in, in this segment, uh, uh, Willie's talking about phase inverters and transformers, uh, knobs, and uh, uh, an interesting discussion about power supply sag and rectifier selection, um, choke, and uh, how to reduce hum in his amplifiers. So, Let's go ahead and, and uh, turn it over to Fat Willie. How about phase inverters? What do you what do you prefer over those? You know, if you have if there's like three common types long of tail. approaches, I like the long you tail. You do long tail. Yeah. Okay. Uh, occasionally, if I'm building a small amp, I'll do a cathodyne phase inverter because they do have their own thing. You know. Right. They they clip unequally, and of course, a lot of guys like that. Yep. You know, because it sounds more. Class A style, you know, class A amps tend to clip asymmetrically, and people like that. Okay. You know? And and do you think that that people come in and actually want to pick an amp specifically because they that phase inverter can they, can they distinguish that enough that it helps them make a decision over A or B amplifier? You're asking me, do I get the guys who read a lot of stuff on the internet? No, 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 no. Okay. If you have two amplifiers here and they don't know anything about the topology, right. and they play one, is is that a, is that a major contributing factor? Is that nonlinearity or the you know? The way I kind of I, I kind of don't see how it could be because two amps like that would be so different from each other in the first place that you wouldn't really be able to say, well, I'm hearing the phase inverter. Okay. You know. And and I like it better because of that. Right. Or you might be liking it better because it's got six V sixes instead of six Ls, or because it's got yeah. a ten inch speaker instead of a fifteen. Or okay, okay. You know, that's there's so many there's so many factors pulling in so many different directions in a in a tube guitar amp. Right. That a lot of times it's hard to put your finger on one thing and say, well, this will do that. Okay. You know. But you're sitting there and you're you're looking at the kind of specs that you want to go for, and and you. Kind of lean towards long tail. I like those, yeah. And when you, do I do because one of the things you can do with them is uh, instead of using fixed plate load resistors, you can put a pot in there. Okay. You know, you can put the juice in and uh, through the wiper and connect the two plates uh, to the uh, to the uh, either ends of the pot. Right. And you got to use a linear pot for that. Right. But then you can tweak it and, and set the set well. The, set well, the, the guy listens to it. Does you that know? end up changing the asymmetricness of, oh, the, yeah. of the of the uh, clipping? Sure, it does. Yeah. Do you make that a knob that they can adjust easily? Sometimes, or? but if I do that, I have to make sure that I have some series resistance in there too, because oh, I so they don't turn want to turn all the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just a little bit of a tweak. Yeah, I you know we did that with uh, uh, I think we used about four different guys, and I said, look, I'm, it's not going to cost you anything. I want to put this little knob in the back of your amp. And I want you to play with it all the time, you know, until mm -hmm. you get it to where you want to leave it, right? right? And uh, I think one guy out of the four had it set so that it clipped fairly symmetrically. All oh. the rest of the guys liked early positive clipping. Which meant which side was the one that was clipping? The positive, positive, positive phase. going phase was yeah. clipping. Yeah, first. First. Wow, that's uh, yeah. I never heard of that before. In fact, I've never actually seen it in a design. Well, uh, you know, an Ampeg SVT can be diddled that way because of the bias, You're right. the way it's set up. You know, uh, and there are some amps out there that you know, you're doing that at the bias of the output tubes, or are you doing no, it in the phase inverter? No, it's in the phase inverter. Oh, okay, but I was just saying, there's some amps out there that have individually adjustable bias on the two phases. And you can mess with it that way. I mean, uh, like those uh, silver face fenders that have that control on the back that says output tubes matching. Right. And that that changes the uh, uh, side to side balance of the bias. And you can do that to a certain extent. Of course, you get it too far, one of the tubes is going to be red hot and the other one's going to be cold. Yeah, yeah. But, right. Do you, but I don't think anybody actually does that with a, and, and I don't either. I mean, you know, I could put that in there if somebody was knowledgeable enough to ask for it. But right. But it, the, uh, 
but from a research perspective, you found that most of the the three of the four prefer positive clipping. Early positive. Early clip, positive. Yeah. And not, I'm not talking hugely early. Oh, sure, sure. You know, I'm talking about like what you see in a, uh, it's like a champ. Okay. The way a champ clips when you crank it up. Yep, yep. You know, so. And do you, the, uh, <clears throat> do you always do the same uh, same tube for the both valves in the uh, phase inverter? You pick uh, like a dual dual triode for that? Yeah, twelve A T sevens mostly. It's okay. It's just like the fender circuit. I mean, I might do something a little different. Uh I might play with the the balance between the, I, I might hook temporarily hook up a, a pot and tune it on the scope. Right. And then measure what I got and put okay. those in there. Yeah. You know. Okay. You ever use uh uh you were use inter interstage transformers at that stage no you know I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of scared of those because you know transformers who knows what the availability is going to be in the future okay you know um, how long are companies like mercury magnetics going to be around building high quality vacuum tube type transformers you know right, right. How long before that stuff goes to China? And I've messed with Chinese transformers, and they're terrible. What ends up being bad about them? Well, first of all, when you look at one, they look like they're built out of, you know, that metal banding stuff they put around big packages? That, right. That's what they look like they're made out of. Okay. Only, only it's like this wide, you know? Oh. It's, they're made out of crap metal. I mean, I'm sure the Chinese do build really good transformers. Mm hmm but I'm sure they cost as much or more than what you would get from Mercury, so why not buy from an American company? Got it. You know? Got it. I don't use a lot of Chinese parts. I hate their sockets. Yeah. Uh, they make really good knobs. I love their knobs. All right. Yeah. They're, they're trying to, they're Marshall knobs from China. Yep. They're way better than real Marshall knobs. Real, real Marshall knobs are crap. <laughs> they break if you look at them cross eyed. How do you. How do you decide which type of uh, biasing topology you use for your output tubes if you want to, you know, do cathode or fixed, or is that really based on the power output? I, you know, I type? don't do a lot of cathode bias stuff. Okay. Um, I suppose I will get into it now that I'm looking at building some uh, single-ended amps. You right. Know. Um, but I, I kind of prefer uh, uh, negative grid bias. And I like it to be adjustable, mm -hmm. you know, um, because it's more tweakable. You know, cathode bias, you get what you get. Right, right. Even if you were to put your uh, pots in there or your decade You, you know, you could do that. The Jim, uh, not Jim Kelly, uh, who was that? Uh, they built an amp, uh, the Seymour Duncan, they had an amp called the Convertible. It had these modules you could slam into it, right? They all had different tube preamp type stuff in them. Yep. And they had a variable cathode bias. They had a big ass rheostat back there. It was like <laughs> 50 watts, 50 okay. watt rheostat. Right. And right. you could juke that up and down, man. I thought that was pretty cool, but it was huge, man. Yeah. You know, it was big. Right. Right. And that thing probably gets dirty. Yeah. That yeah. that's the whole thing. See. Anything that's adjustable can get dirty. Right, right. That's the excuse Mesa Boogie uses for making you buy their tubes. Because? Because we won't use a pot because pots can drift and pots can get dirty and pots can go open. Oh. So they put in fixed resistors and uh, you buy their tubes or not. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Because they're picked for the right range, you know. Uh, that's marketing. No, that's fine. That's fine. I don't think I'll ever understand it because I'm an engineer, but that's okay. Somebody's out trying to sell something. Uh, <clears throat> do you actually look at uh, the the sag and the power supply, and your how do you do your rectifier choice, and does the sag actually that's, impact your? That's your almost design? by by ear. I would say so. Okay. I get one of my guitar playing, because I don't play the guitar. Well, not, not so as you'd notice. I do play it, but I'm hideously bad. Uh, 
uh, I get one of my guitar playing friends who's really accomplished to come in and play mm -hmm. and I'll listen to it and I'll say okay now hang on I'll slap another rectifier in there and say what do you think of this I'll listen to it so you know pretty much I wind up using five AR4s and what voltage are you running at for those then? oh they would be up in the uh, four to five hundred volt bracket and the currents around 100 milliamps at that level as well and depends on what the output stage is but even regardless of which tube you choose you're you're using an ar4 5 ar4 yeah i kind of like the way that tube sounds you know and you get a thermal benefit too since it draws an amp less than a 5u4 from yeah. the filaments yeah okay so okay and and uh, I, I like that, you know, I like that tube. Occasionally I'll put 5U4s in stuff that people say, well, it's too loud, you know. And and you put a 5U4 in there now, a 5U4 doesn't sag as well as a 5AR4. Okay. Because they're rated at more current. Okay. You know, even though the forward drop is larger and the plate bulbs go down, if you put a 5U4 where a 5AR4 was, right? Okay, and some people like that; they like to the decrease in the headroom. You know, yep. Uh, the uh, the sag is better with a 5AR4. You know, better in terms of smaller or more? No, it's more. It's more. Yeah, because it's rated at less current. Okay, so does that it, that end up uh, impacting the compression of the? Yeah, it, it it gives the amp natural compression down on the saturation side. Yeah, uh, natural compression is cool. I think it's a little overrated. You know, I mean, I think more people more people spend time obsessing over it when they shouldn't really worry about it that much. You know, because the amp's going to sound like what it sounds like, and you're going to find one that you like. Okay, and you. Yeah. Do you do you want to try to educate these guitar players that the amplifier is is an instrument all to itself? Some of them know it, okay, and some of them are are finding out about it. Yep, you know, and some of them play solid state. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. How about using a choke? Uh, I like them. Matter of fact, I build whenever if I build like a champ. Yep. I put a choke in it. What size do you put in there? Oh, a little bitty one. Three. Like, like they use in uh, uh, a deluxe reverb. Okay. What is it like three, five Henrys or something like that? Or, you it's know? the deluxe reverb choke. Okay, I, that's fine. I never measured it. I don't know. Right. It. Yeah, I guess it's about it's around there. Yeah. Yeah. But I do like a you know a pie filter with a choke in the middle. Mm -hmm. You know, and mm -hmm. that, and that. Man, that really makes a difference. The champs hum, you know? Right. I'll put the plate on the other side of the choke, you know, which is a little unorthodox, but um, that really kills the hum. Well, sure it does. You, you get an extra pull there. I mean, uh, in, yeah. on the filter side, you get an extra pull from the choke. Yeah. Um, I hate hum. I really I can't stand it. No, who wants it? <laughs> you, you know, look, guitar players... I, I really believe this now. Guitar players are deaf to hum. They don't hear it. The first guitar they ever owned mm -hmm. hummed. And Every that, guitar they had after that hummed, and they right. just learned to tune it out. They don't hear it. You hear the hum in here, right? There's a there's another oh, there's, there's all another kind of stuff in here. going on in here somewhere. I yeah, there's probably a refrigerator running in the back, and the ballasts buzz in the uh, yeah. fluorescence, and yeah, there's. Uh, 60 cycle hum is everywhere cycle i just dated myself the 60 hertz hum is everywhere <laughs> it's everywhere you can't get away from it right 